Today we have a very special guest, uh, Dr. Mohammed Badawi. Um, Dr. Mohammed Badawi uh, is an Egyptologist um, and highly knowledgeable in the field. I've had the privilege to listen to you and, uh, and I have another privilege to interview you today to ask you some questions. Um, we'll try to keep this uh, brief because I know you have so much knowledge about this. Thank you so much. But uh, can you just give us a brief introduction about yourself My and pleasure. why you chose to become an Egyptologist? First, thank you so much for, uh, for this nice interview. It's my pleasure to be with you today, guys. You are highly uh, <laughs> knowledge than me. I'm, I'm just learning from you. Guys. No, you're just being humble. Yeah, no, no, no. This, 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 this is real, actually. We, we all learning from each other. Uh, my name is Mohammed Badawi, uh, Bachelor of Science and Guidance from the Min University, Hirwan University for Tourism and Active Management, Department Guidance. Um, I've been working as an Egyptologist to guide for more than 15 years now. I got a master's degree in museum studies uh, from the same university, Hebron University. Now I'm, I'm a researcher in the same program, museum studies and heritage uh, worldwide. Um, and uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. And it's uh, actually, as an Egyptologist, uh, I dream from my childhood, everyone, everyone actually, you know, uh, everyone interested from the childhood about the ancient Egyptian history, ancient Egyptian civilization. So uh, I'm really uh, keen to, to uh, understanding this, his, this history, this uh, unit, this great civilization. That's why when I had got the opportunity to join at academic way, so I never doubt with that, so I went directly and beside my academic uh, bachelor, I started to get uh, many, many researches beside my many studies about that. I'm happy that you're living that dream now. Thank you. Thank you so much. So why do you think it's important for people to know their history, being an Egyptologist? Why do you think, after all the knowledge that you know, why is it important that we know our history? Listen, uh, let's say first, what is the history? History is a science of maybe. So maybe yes, maybe no. Of course, there is a basic. It's an every change. But, but on the other side, everyone has to know his history, he has to know his identity, he has to know his culture. Okay. That does not mean the struggle between the history of ancient Egyptian civilization or the history of Inca, for example, mm -hmm. or the history of Maya, you know, it's, it's, it's not that working like that. Mm -hmm. When you study passion, and in an honest way and a respectful way about the, any civilization in the world, you will totally respect the other civilizations, the other sides, the other history, the other people. Mm -hmm. So this kind of respect it to, to create a creative society supposed to be the first step of this society. Everyone know his identity first. Okay. So if everyone know from who we are, for where we go, what is his uh, ancestors, what is background culture, I mean in the culture and the history, so you will put your first step to go to creative society without any problem. But when you never know about anything, you will just be living chaos. You never know from you are, what's your background, what's your history, what's your culture. So you will live like person with no loyalty. Just person, just a little, you know? Yes. Just nothing, you know? No identity. No identity. No identity. This, this is very important for any creative society to talk about here with all perspective for the all civilizations that come in this world. Those people they live in creative society from by the way. Okay. If you teach them very well, you will find that's in deeps. How for example someone like in Zosar in the third dynasty in the old kingdom how he is allowed for the first time in the history someone came from the common people to be the second one after him in Hotep, mm -hmm. the genius architecture for example 
Okay. So there are many examples in our life how they respect the other people, how they give the equal opportunities for the other in the who's a participant in the society at the time. Uh, everybody talk about equal opportunity for people with disabilities and abilities, for example. And by the way, this is my topic in my master and my PhD now. Okay. I was in my master degree talking about uh, promoting access scheme for the children with autism inside Egyptian museums mm -hmm. in general. And my my main topic, how our my main target, how to engagement those people within community and without any isolating from the other or to not make them feeling they are different. They are different because they are different, yes, but they are different because they have skills. Not they are different because they are away from the society, because they, the, the society look at them by very bad way. So, before we are talking about creative society, we have to judge our, ourselves first. And we have to start to believe for the others, to give equal opportunity for everyone to live. Just live. Just live. So you're saying to look inside of us first. Right. So you would say this um, goes with the value of taking responsibility. So would you say it's important to take responsibility? Yes. To take in a creative society. To take responsibility for yourself first. To know who you are. Okay. To know what's your identity, what your culture, what you believe, what your. I'm not a talk about here's a religious. Religious is something else. I will talk this in later in details, but, but I'm talking about here just the simple principle for the human being to live. Okay. If you started upon, like that, yes. You touched upon a very interesting point where you said that the creative society was something that was practiced in the ancient Egyptian times. Yes, for sure. Can you elaborate a bit more on this? Yes, yes. The ancient Egyptian, how, how these people create this kind of society is still a lot of secrets for the abilities, for the skills of the human beings. Everyone, everyone, even you, you never know about yourself. But when you put yourself in a serious situation or in a serious problem, but before you have to practice your mind, your soul, your heart, how to deal with that? If you unite it with your cosmetics and with your world, with your own world, in that from this time you will be able to be a creative person, you will be able to get the science, to get the knowledge, to share it to the other, and from this point you will be able to create a great civilization like the ancient Egyptian. Okay. So in somehow I answer you the question, but in some other way, yes, this people practice sharing, sharing the knowledge to each other. Okay. They not hide the signs. So the transparency uh, information. Sorry, transparency. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, be, because uh, logic, if they are slaves or something, they will never. The slaves, if I push you as a slaves to build, for example, let's take the, the pyramid as a case of study because everyone talk about, in one of the theory, talk about the slaves of the pyramid. Of course not. If you, if you are a slave and I'm pushing you to do something, you would do it. But for how long this stuff or this building it will be extended two years five years thousand years two thousand years yeah. why why there is no much information not much civilization left from the roman time why you never nobody asked about mm. this before i always wondered about that but i yes, don't know i don't have the answer it was it was something like negative energy with the, for the the workman field about okay. about you will be working about this field you know when yeah. you work in the very bad mood yes. in the negative energy around you mm. you just want to finish your work to get away from those people yes but this totally never happened for the ancient Egyptian people for the ancient Egyptian civilization okay. the people doing this by passion. By love, by 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 yeah, embarrassing for what they do about about uh, 
the, 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 the civilization. Yeah. And we know we will get their, their rights about that. We discover some papers, talk about the ancient Egyptian people, get something by our names, our, our meaning, now salary for, for what they built, for, for example, the pyramids or temples and so on. The temples, it wasn't only for the high priest. The temple, it was something like a big school for everyone can participate. But it depends on your skills. If you have a skill, you will be chosen and you will be in the high rank yeah. and you will be in very good position. So it was equal. It was equal opportunity. It depends on your skills, you will get it to your position. Okay. In Hotel, if they are slaves, no, never, ever we can get someone like Imhotep. Why I take Imhotep as an example? The man who created the theory of architecture. While his theory is still, still very well studied until now in the great universes all over the world. So, if someone like this, he held many titles during the king. Mm. And he came from the common. He was not a cousin of the king. He is not belongs to the royal court at mm. all. Someone like Senep. Senep, he held a great title. Senep was a dwarf. If this society wasn't that uh, creative. good enough or creative, they were never allowed for someone like mm. Senep to get this title, so get this rank. You're trying to say that the uh, ancient Egyptian society was creative and being inclusive of all yes. these people. They, did, they were not exclusive and sort of yes. not accepting. And they, would, they were actually open for, it, for even for the other civilization to send to sharing their knowledge with the other and there's a reason for now to found something like other civilization around us we found some pyramids some in somewhere we found some symbols like the flower fly the key of life and so on something like that that's a proof the ancient Egyptian people sharing the knowledge yes. which proved the ancient Egyptian people they had their own constitution and this is the word. If you want to build a, a creative society, you have to make your first the constitution to arrange that. But fair constitution. Yes. Not constitution for some people, they just put some article what they like or don't like. No. It's everyone have to participate about this. We make such of assessment procedures, such of big assessment procedures for everyone. What you need for the creative society? For example, what you need from the creative society? Give me just just one sentence, one word, two words. Depends on you. Depends on you. Um, there's, I mean, uh, you know, freedom, transparency of information, um, equal opportunity. I mean, I can't, I can't. There's, I would say, equal opportunity. You know, like yeah. these are the the main ones. Yes. So if. It, now you said the right, the right stuff for nobody can doubt that. Everybody, when you hear about that, you will confirm. By the way, it's the same idea for religious. Mm. All religious talk about the same things from Moses or Jesus or even uh, Muhammad. All of them talked about the same code of ethics. No liar, no kill, respect yes. the others. That's why Thou shalt even, not kill. Yes, yes. yes. Even if, that's why I never understand why the people need to struggle all the time by the calling a struggle of civilization or the struggle of religious. If yeah. you ask me about my opinion about religious, for example, I'm deeply Muslim. I respect and honor to be a Muslim. But does not mean if I not respect the other religious. I respect it so much. Mm. And I never deal with the other because of the religious or because of the culture. I I deal with the people, the humans. Yes. It's our responsibility to, to treat each mm. other by the manners. Yes. By code of ethics. We're different but equal. Yes. Right. Yes. That's yes. why that's why, for example, I believe the whole religious has come in this world just look like a big book written in three chapters. Mm. The first chapter written by the Prophet Musa and he said good of ethics. But it was something missing. It added in chapter two by Jesus. And it was something little, little bit missing. It's added by the chapter three by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they make review what is happening in the other two chapters, then we close the book. Mm. 
Even the Buddhism, by the way, they, they never, it, it is not, it's not from the main religious at all, but, but they never talk about anything is bad. They never make something like, I excuse the, 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 the people who believe in the Buddhism to kill the other or to... Yes, they overlap in values. Yes. yes. You mentioned Imhotep, uh, Imhotep as a great architect, obviously. Yeah, he's not only architect. Yes, he's he, a great medicine too. Yes, he is. He's, uh, he's a scientist. You know, he's a, a, he's a, a great, a great astronomer too. Yes, it's a ultimate title. Yes. Actually, he was a great. I think he was uh, like a polymath. Like he was. Yeah. He was good in several fields. Excellent in several. And fields. multi, multi skills. Yes. Well. Um, how do you think Imhotep would, um, since he was in a creative society, um, would he? be transparent with his knowledge and share it with everyone. Yeah. And if he did, what would he share with us if he was alive today? What would he share with the audience here? Tell he us, lived, he what lived, would he tell If he lived with us, he will teach us how to respect the other first because he lived in a creative society, which is, which is the first rule, respect each other. Then he, of course, looking for the people they have skills to create the science to build a very strong creative society. Mm. Because creative society without economy, strong economy, strong uh, strong science, uh, strong ability about everything. Even the the the, the, the ancient Egyptian civilization challenge the climate change. Because the people I'm 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 working as a tour guide that's Every time I pick up clients to, to the pyramids, for example, they surprised. Mm. How come, like this building, still standing, charming like that, after all of these years? Because those people, they built it in a consciousness and in a good respect and honest way. For example, if you, if you have an opportunity to visit the Egyptian museum in Tahrir Square in Egypt, and you just, once you go to the entrance and you will go just further, about a hundred meters walk, there are two giant big statues there for Amenhotep III and his wife, T. It's a showing, she impressing him from the backside, you know. There is something, yeah, yeah, we talk about the history of this couple of statues, it's amazing, it's nice, but the history not only like nice narrating or nice stories, it's something like a messages, like alarm messages yes. to, to teach you. So if you going at the back side of these statues, you find there are the fingers of the queen just come out from the behind of the king. As Egyptologists, we are asking honestly ourselves, many times, thousand times, why the ancient Egyptian people need to do something like this? And we are sure the ancient Egyptian people when they did something, they never did something like a case or by accidentally. They mean everything, every small details, they mean it. So after many researches about this finger, because this finger it's, is useless, you know, it's, a, it's already they deliver us the message about the relationship love between the king and queen from the front side. Why do you need to do something like this? That's the answer for your question. Okay. This philosophy. Because yeah. of this, I've always told this or say this for my clients or my tourists or my students. Because of these small details, I show them everything still exists. The pyramids still exist. The great uh, hypostyle hall of the Karnak temples still exist. Because those people interest in the small details. So when you work or when you do something in your life, you have interest in the small details. Not thinking like the normal, you know. If we want to be in a real creative society, we have to thinking abnormal. Abnormal, not meaning we're suffering from some disease. No, abnormal, it's meaning creativity. It will be extended from one generation to another, to another, to another. So the legacy will live on after yes. that. Yes. Okay. Dr. Muhammad, um, what would you say is your favorite uh, foundation from the Creative Society, from the eight foundations? 
Do you have one that's a favorite for you or you think is the most important? For me, if you give me the opportunity to build the Creative Society, the first thing I will work on it, I will start to make open discussion in the communities about the constitution of this society. Okay. What you need from this society? What is the main article? Of course, we will make basics. And when we live in the creative society, every time when we find something new, something valuable for the people, something uh, uh, practicing for the people, we will add for this. Okay. Do you think the eight foundations can be a constitution? Yes. Okay. So yes. we can use that as a base? As a base. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And constitution, the first the article, code of ethics. Because society without memory, it will never live forever. Okay. Yes. Dr. it's been uh, splendid speaking with you. Thank and you so much. It was, it was my pleasure, actually. Yeah. And just the final uh, message you have, if you have any brief message you want to tell, our message on Alatra TV. Uh, do you have anything uh, you would like to tell? Uh, my, my message for Alatra TV and the people, it's my pleasure to be a part or a member of Alatra team, Alatra society actually. And uh, my message for you guys, uh, just live in the conscious way and, and believe in your ability in your life and don't look at for the others by low rank, whatever your rank in your society, whether you have a power or you have the money or you have whatever, you have to be humble. You have to be flexible to learn. Just live to learn. And surely after you get the information and the knowledge, share it to the other and asking the other to share it to the other. And from this point, we will have very strong creative society. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. I hope you enjoyed the interview.